were to ask you how many roads you traveled on in getting here today, what would your answer be? And if I were to ask you their names, if I were to ask you how many streams and creeks and rivers you crossed over in arriving here today, what would the number be? And if I were to ask you their names, could you tell them to me? Why is it that we can remember something that is dead, like a road, but we have difficulty remembering something that is alive, like a river? And the simple answer is because they're buried. This is a picture of Sawmill River, and in 1920, they buried their river. They put it into a concrete culvert. And almost a hundred years later, they daylighted it. They brought it back to life. Which would you prefer? Interesting thing is, is that today, we still bury rivers. Think back to when you were a child and your home stream. I can remember mine. I remember sketching it for art. I remember scooping down with a jug and bringing up lots of wriggling tadpoles. I remember jumping from rock to rock with my friends as we chased our little leaf and stick boats down the stream. And I remember swinging from ropes and landing in these beautiful blue poles, pools. And what does my river look like today? It looks similar to this. Do you know that 97% of the wetlands in the Bay of Plenty no longer exist? Let's have a look at Fraser Cove as an example. In 1943, you see a black and white photograph, and there'll be trees and streams and a wetland. In 2015, the exact same area, exact same scale, we have what? Fraser Cove Shopping Center, and adjacent to that, an industrial park. And isn't it interesting that the only thing that we have of what was living there before is a dead street. And that street is called Brook Street. Now, I'm an engineer. I was trained as an engineer to drain wetlands. When I worked for consultants, we would take beautiful winding rivers and we would straighten them. And then we would build high walls, we call levees or stop banks. And why? So that on the one side you could farm the wetland and on the other side you could build residential estates. And then working at councils, we would take a beautiful winding river and we would straighten it in a pipe and then on top we would place earth and then on top of that we would place grass. And what would we call it? An urban park. As a society, we have been trapped in the urban fabric of thinking that this is natural, normal, and necessary. It is natural because when I walk into the middle of Tauranga and I stand on your streets and I look up and down, I can see a road and cafes and shops, but I don't see any streams. 
and I listen to the conversation at the cafe, I can hear people talking about the signs that are falling down on the road, maybe the parking meter that's not working, but I don't hear any conversation about the stream that was once here that no longer exists. We believe that it is normal because whether I'm in London, LA, or Tauranga, I see no streams in the city. It's as normal as walking down a street. It's as normal as opening a tap and water coming out. And we believe it's necessary as well. It's part of our urban fabric. We've always done it this way. We believe that when we develop an area, we need to put in pipes to house our streams and our stormwater. We look at a beautiful stream and we say that is of less value than a parking lot. We say that it is too expensive to clean our streams, but we love the sound of the street sweeper coming by and picking up our rubbish. We've been trapped into the three ends. We think it's natural, normal, and necessary. And this urban fabric for us creates massive problems. Flooding is one. Rivers live in valleys. And what we love to do is we pipe them and close them out. And then what do we build on top? Houses and shops and factories. And then we wonder, when it rains, why doesn't the storm fit through a pipe when the river says, I live in a valley like that? And if you've taken away the river, it only has one place to go, and that's through your lounge. In the last few years, the Bay of Plenty has spent over hundreds of millions of dollars on flood damage. Whether you live in Whakatani, Tapuki, Tauranga, Waihi Beach, flood events have hit them all, and we paid big time for them. In 2014, in Easter, you had flood events come through. That cost you $50 million. Well, if we double it, that's $100 million. Our urban fabric is costing us millions in flood damage, and we need to change the paradigm. In Christchurch, in the 2011 earthquakes, there were 7,000 houses that were destroyed. Think of the families and the businesses and the social upheaval that went with that. Billions of dollars we are talking of. And why? Because we built those houses on old river systems. I think nature is trying to tell us something on how we develop and design our cities. The good news is, times are changing. Engineers like myself are being reborn. Town planners are being reborn. We are looking at things differently, and that is the good news, because there are significant benefits that we can realize is when we wake up one day and realize we have to do it differently. What are the benefits? Catkill's project in New York is a classical example of saving billions of dollars. They saved $8 billion by realizing that it is better to preserve the integrity of the river than to allow our farming functions, industrial functions, and human functions to pollute our rivers. And the only reason why we as engineers build you water purification plants is to remove the toxins that we have put into the river. If there are no toxins and pollutants, 
we don't need to purify. And they realized that. And New York saved $8 billion doing that. What about the flooding? Rain events move downhill into valleys and, str and streams and creeks and rivers. To trap them in pipes is asking us for problems. We need to learn to free them out. We need to open up the systems that carry our storms. In Holland, they have a program called Making Room for the River. They say, give back the river what it needs. A river wants to flow higher and lower. Give it space. Move the houses from on top to the side, out of the way. Creating room for the river introduces healthy spaces for us into our urban fabric. We take our rivers and we bring them alive. We create long parks that follow the river systems into our city. We, in essence, have green fingers that web their way into the city fabric. These green and blue corridors that wedge their way in to the gray are attractive for councils to build walkways. What do walkways do? Walkways invite us to take a walk. And in taking a walk, we are outside, being more healthy, breathing fresh air. We de-stress. De-stressing means that we are less likely to visit the doctor, less likely to go to hospital, less likely to have hospitals build hospital beds. That's a massive saving for society. Look at La Rosa Park, the image that's in front of you. That park there, you can see the stream in the middle flowing down. That stream used to live inside a pipe. Where was the height of the earth above it? You can see the bridge in the background at about that height. Auckland decided to rebirth and to reborn their river. They opened it up, and that's what you see there. Look at the walkways that attract families to come and use it. And now the children, as you can see there, can go down with their jaws and scoop up those wriggling little tadpoles, and they can jump from rock to rock, chasing their paper boats. Society is healthier in all ways. We know of climate change, sea level rising by one meter in 100 years. But what will that do for the rain and the storms? We know two things. Number one, storms will become more frequent. And number two, storms will become more fierce, more rain falling in a shorter time frame. So if we have our smaller pipes already that create for us problems, imagine what those more frequent and more significant are going to do for us. It means more money out of our back pocket to pay unless we change our paradigm. Isn't it interesting that part of the urban fabric that we have created has resulted in the extinction of 51 species of birds in New Zealand? You will never hear their tweet again, never them see them fly past again, ever. But if we create this green fabric into our cities, we are creating homes, and everybody loves a good home whether it's you or me or a bird. So you and me in our urban fabric, we can enjoy the space of not seeing per extinction perpetuated. In this green urban fabric, who of society has the least chance to touch and handle nature? The poor. The poor are not privileged to travel either by car or by plane, to far and beautiful places and to experience the love and joy of nature. So if we bring nature to them into their concrete um, ghettos, 
maybe we are having the opportunity to create the next David Attenborough. So we have multiple benefits that we have seen climb on top of each other. And interestingly, those are all at reduced costs. So it becomes a little bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? That we have to change from one to the other. So we all prefer a bubbling brook to honking horns in the road. We all prefer to see the fish compared to a straight pipe. We all prefer to have a picnic on a riverbank compared to eating a sandwich in a car park. So if we all prefer, let's all collaborate and join and make it happen. So here we have an image of the center of Christchurch. The blue pencil is pointing to the cathedral that's in the middle, Christchurch Cathedral. And up the left and across the top is the Avon River, which you're probably familiar with. But what is colored in blue there is a river that no longer exists. It has been stolen from you and me and buried. So next time you stand in front of the cathedral and you're looking at it, look down to your right. And instead of a road, you can say to yourself, once there flowed a blue, blue, beautiful river passing by. So here's a project for you. Find your old maps of where you stay. Color them in and walk along the roads and find out where rivers and creeks and streams once flowed in your area. The Maoris have a beautiful idiom. I am the river and the river is me. The old biblical prophets, prophet said, out of the city will flow forth living streams with trees growing on either side. River keeps us alive. Rivers keep cities alive. We cannot survive without them. So next time you're at the intersection and you see the traffic sign and the road name, ask yourself this question. I wonder what the name is of the stream, creek, or river that is flowing under this road. Thank you very much.